Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. Welcome to this episode of Youth Focus. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. We are living in the perilous time. Just think about the pandemic situation we are facing right now. Today, we have Evangelist Dr. Joel Albert to talk to us on the topic, Living in the Last Days. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Let us sit prayerfully and listen from the Word of God. God's name be glorified. Thank you. My dear brothers and sisters, do we know this grim reality that we are living in the last days? You see, the Bible reminds us many a times that we are in fact living in a time which is very close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are living, I would say, in the latter part of the last days and we need to be very careful, very much in terms of our character and our life. And we should be concerned about how we live our lives for the Lord. Apostle Paul had the same concern for his son in the Lord, Timothy. And he says to him in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come my dear ones we need to understand the fact that the last days are perilous times apostle paul was now almost finishing his journey in this world he was in his prison cell in rome and this was the last letter the last epistle he was writing and he chose to write that epistle to his beloved son in, in faith, Timothy. And as he writes that letter, he says here, be very careful because the perilous times of the last days are soon coming. And you need to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. He takes a lot of examples and then he shares his own character certificate. And he also tells young Timothy what is expected of him. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look into our own lives, we need to be very careful in terms of how we live in these last days. And we can gain a lot of lessons from the last days of the Old Testament times. Because when we turn to the last book of the Old Testament, the prophecy of Malachi, this was the prophecy in which the Lord spoke to the children of Israel for the last time after which he did not speak in the Old Testament times and in that 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament there was absolutely nothing that came from the Lord in terms of prophecy and that is why we need to pay very careful attention to this seldom read book of Malachi when we turn to that book where we see this particular phrase being mentioned many a times we, you see, uh, that phrase that we read is, that word that we read, in fact, is the word wherein, or we can say in what way. The Lord puts forth questions before the children of Israel. And five times they reply in saying, wherein have we done so? As if they are completely oblivious to what the Lord is saying. As if the Lord is saying something wrong. And as if they are challenging the Lord. And we need to be very careful of that because, my dear ones, the children of Israel who initially were in the great sin of idolatry had to be taken to the land of Babylon for 70 years of captivity. Well, to be pre precise, the 10 tribes, the 10 northern tribes of Israel were taken captive by Assyria, never to be brought back. But the two tribes who were taken into Babylon after 70 years of captivity we were brought back as prophesied by prophet jeremiah and when we look at the lives of the people of god the children of israel they lived a good life for the lord during the initial days after coming back from babylon we see that god had completely removed the idea of idolatry from their mind in fact even today after so many years you will see that the children of israel still have not fallen back into that sin that they were in earlier. But what happened was, as time passed, 
the relationship with the Lord dwindled and they went far and far away from the Lord. And when we read Malachi, we see that the life of the children of Israel was very bad. And they did not feel anything wrong in asking the Lord, wherein have we done so? Let us just focus on those verses for a couple of minutes. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 A son honoureth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honour? And if then I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts. Unto you, O priests, that despise by name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thee? If you read verse 7, it says there, Wherein have we polluted thee? Then when we turn to chapter 2 and verse 17, there we read, Ye have wearied the Lord with your words, yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? Further on, when we read chapter 3 and verse 7, Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Chapter 3 and verse 8, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. My dear ones, five times the Lord spoke to them and they were adamant enough and arrogant enough to speak against the Lord as if they wanted to say, We do not agree with you, Lord. We don't agree with you and the report that you are giving us. We are not people like that. We are following everything by the book. We are going for all the feasts. We are following all the ordinances. We are doing everything as the law commands and prescribes. But then the Lord through the prophet Malachi speaks to them and points out the three mistakes that they were doing. The first mistake was the relationship with the Lord. It was not right. Secondly, the mistake that they were doing was the relationship with the house of God was not right. And the third thing that they were doing wrong was their relationship with their family or with their husbands or wives were not right. And even the priests of that time, even the religious leaders of that time were no good. And that is why those times were also akin to these times in being perilous for a young man and a young woman to be careful of. First of all, I said that they were not having a proper relationship with God himself. Because we read in Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6, A son honoureth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honour? If, and if I be a master, where is my fear? You see, the Lord was pointing out the fact and also pointing out the discrepancy in terms of that fact. And that is what the people were not ready to understand. They were not ready to agree that they were dishonoring the Lord and they were not fearing the Lord. My dear ones, are we like that when it comes to our life with the Lord? Are we oblivious to the fact that many a times we fall short of what God expects from us? We, in, instead of looking at God's standards, we keep our own standards. And if we are meeting our own standards, we say, oh, that is good enough for me as a Christian. My dear ones, that is not so. Because they did not honor the Lord. They did not respect the Lord. How am I in my daily life? When I open the Bible, when I sit in the, in the assembly with the scriptures, when I sit for the meetings, especially during these days, am I focusing on what the Lord is speaking to me or am I dishonoring Him by looking at my mobile phone, by reading something else, by doing things that are not right in the sight of the Lord? My dear ones, is my relationship with the Lord right? Because if I am not living a life pleasing to the Lord, I am like these evil doers of those times and even as Apostle Paul mentions in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Secondly, when we read Malachi chapter 1 verses 7 and 8, we see their relation to the house of God. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. 
and if we offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if we offer the lame and sick is it not evil offer it now unto thy governor and will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person say the lord of hosts my dear ones once again the lord is focusing their attention on himself and saying what he is expecting from them it is not the fact that they should sacrifice but the importance of how they are sacrificing how their heart is when they are sacrificing unto the lord my dear ones today many youngsters including myself i would say are very much interested in working serving ministering for the lord but that does not mean that in order to fulfill those ministries my life and my background is not on par with what i speak many times that is seen in our lives many times we live a life that is not pleasing to the lord many times we live and do things that are very wrong in the sight of god and then we without having any regard for the lord and for the house of god stand in the house of god and we try to share the word we try to be involved in the ministry and we try to do something so that we may in fact show for that we are in fact good people my dear ones we are not fooling others but we are fooling ourselves when we do that i'm sorry for being a bit negative on this but we need to be very careful my dear young brothers and sisters because many youngsters have lived a double life and because of that they have gone away from the lord and it deeply concerns not just me but many parents many elders many servants of the lord looking at the state of many such youngsters who do not have a proper relationship with the house of god with the assembly of god thirdly and finally the relationship with their families malachi chapter 2 verse 14 yet ye say wherefore because the lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou hast dealt treacherously yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant my dear ones these people did not have a proper relationship with their wives as a young christian let me understand these are perilous times that i am living in where the sanctity of marriage where the importance of being a pure and a chaste youngster is not something that many youngsters focus on am i in the sin of fornication am i caught in the sin of adultery let me be very careful because that is what the people of those days were doing this is a sin that has taken many people of god away from him many people of god have in the words of apostle paul made a shipwreck of their faith may we not be so my dear ones because in the book of malachi we see a remnant being spoken of in verses 16 and 17 and god's wonderful care for them it was amongst these bad evil doers that there was the small remnant of people who feared the lord and thought upon his name and the lord focused on them and the lord repaid them fourfold in terms of what he did for them my dear ones may we be like paul may we be like timothy may we be like the remnant in the book of malachi and not like the people who live in the last days and may the lord help us in these last days to be that faithful remnant to be used for god's glory and for the furtherance of his gospel may god's name be glorified Jesus will guard his children